Hi there, my name is Barbara Behrman, um, and I first want to start by thanking Robin and the Community Arts Partnership for finding creative ways to bring artists and the community together during these really strange times that we're living through, and thanks for making the art trail possible. I am primarily a fabric artist who primarily makes art quilts, and I say primarily because I also dabble in mixed media collage and acrylic painting and sometimes functional fabric art, and I'll talk about that in a little bit later. Um, when people hear the word quilt, what often comes to mind is something rather traditional, maybe something kind of old fashioned, um, and it's often based on patchwork or the creation of blocks. And you can see that here. This is the first quilt that I ever made, a uh, bed quilt for my daughter when she was three. She's now 26, so some time has passed. Um, and the colors might not be traditional, but you can see the, the traditional block-based construction. Art quilts, however, often don't resemble this at all, other than the fact that artists typically use thread and fabric to hold, um, to hold the layers together. And then from there, we diverge in often endless directions. So what I would like to do is show you examples of what I create, starting with where I create. So my studio is located in my home, just uh, in the woods, just at, south of uh, Ithaca in Danby. And if you were actually able to visit right now, you would come up these steps. Unfortunately, I am not wheelchair accessible, so I apologize to anybody for whom accessibility would be an issue. Um, but assuming you can come up the steps, you would enter into the dining room, and you can see that when it's open studios, I kind of just turn the whole main floor into a gallery space. The studio itself is located in a part of the house that used to be known as the den or the family room, and I still do occasionally have to share it with other family members, um, but I really do like the fact that it's so accessible and integrated into the rest of my life. So here you can see um, the studio all nice and cleaned up for open studios last year. Um, it shows a couple of my work surfaces for painting, for cutting fabric, the table on the right, there's a place for the sewing machine to come up so that I can stitch there, um, and then has lots of storage space for fabric and other supplies. Well, from this vantage point, if you just pivot to the right, you'll see my favorite part of the studio, which is a six by six foot design wall that lets me audition fabrics for pieces. It's very easy to move them around. I kind of refer to it as color forms for grown-ups, those little things that some of us played with when we were little kids. Um, this particular picture shows work that at the time was both finished and in, uh, in process. But in case you think that the studio is always this neat, this is really what it looks like a lot of the time when I'm working on a piece. And uh, as an aside, the mess that you see on the wall is now the quilt that you see behind me here, and I'll, I'll come back to that later. Well, lately I tend to work in one of two ways. The first way involves a process that's completely improvisational and abstract. And my starting point for these pieces is often color and color combinations and fabric combinations. And then I build the composition from there, taking into effect other design elements like line and shape and value, et cetera. So I often start by creating little small compositions of fabrics, maybe four to 12 inches each, little units. And then I throw them up onto the design wall in a process that I call fabric barf. I don't think I originated that term, um, but it's just putting the fabrics up to see how well they play together. And then they get moved around dozens, if not hundreds of times, pieces get taken away, I add things, et cetera, et cetera. And then this kind of mess became this piece, which I call Not All Who Wander Are Lost. And you can see here that it's pieced and quilted. So to just diverge for one second, we're talking about these pieces as quilts, but so far I've been talking about the process of piecing, not quilting, because quilting as a verb is actually the process of stitching together multiple layers, the fabric top, which you see here, a backing on the bottom, and then in between there's typically some sort of batting, which gives it a little bit of dimension. When you're quilting, um, there are also endless decision uh, decisions that go into the process and ideally you want to end up with a quilting design that enhances the overall visual appeal of the piece and doesn't take away from it. So I'm not going to talk about the about that process anymore. I just wanted to share that so you'd have a fuller understanding of what's involved in the process of making these pieces. 
Well, over the past uh, two years, I have started to make more and more of the fabric that I use. And this incorporates um, a whole variety of dyeing techniques, um, everything from using dye as paint to using silk screens to using immersion processes or resist processes, all sorts of things. And it's so much fun. Um, and I want to show you a few of these because each one is unique. And then when you combine those into compositions, you get really, really one of a kind pieces. So here's a whole bunch of pieces that I did this summer, taking advantage of the nice weather to be able to go outside. Um, here are four other samples. Um, these represent uh, all different techniques, which I don't have time to go into. Um, I'd be happy to talk to any of you later if you're interested in learning more. And then those pieces then become the basis for you know, throwing them on the design wall and trying to find different um, combinations that work well together. So this next piece is, uh, is one that I did that's based completely on fabrics that I dyed. Um, I call it seven o'clock because it reminds me of the cacophony of sounds that people made every night near the beginning of the pandemic to show support for our frontline healthcare workers. And those two um, big shapes in the middle, the gray shape and the hot pink magenta area kind of make me think of high rise buildings and all the little um, compositions around it are sort of like the cacophony of sounds and, and the chaos of urban life. Well, what often happens um, when I'm making these pieces is that I get little leftovers and I don't like to waste them. So this piece called Urban Village um, was used with a lot of the leftovers from seven o'clock. This piece and a lot of the other ones that I do tend to rely a lot on right angles. Um, sometimes I try to move away from that. So this next piece, which still needs a name, I'm open to suggestions. Um, is moving away from that. There were three pieces that was all one at first, but I didn't like it, so I cut it apart, and then they can work on their own or as a set. Um, and what I think makes this kind of style interesting is that if you look closely, you'll see very, very thin lines of fabric that are like 1 16th to 1 8th of an inch wide, and they just have a lot of energy. Um, this is also using mostly fabrics that I hand dyed with a couple of exceptions. So, so far I've talked about um, projects where color and composition are my starting point, but I also create work that starts with photos as an inspiration. Um, and oftentimes uh, the final piece doesn't resemble the photo whatsoever. Um, so here's a piece called After the Harvest. I took a picture of a cornfield and cropped it. This is a picture on the bottom right of the cropped version of that photo, but I converted it to a black and white image so that I could better see the values. And then I used mostly my hand-dyed fabrics to create this composition after the harvest. This next one um, is called Casca de la Gorge. Those are the two panels that you see behind me here. Um, and this was uh, based on a photo. I was hiking in the gorge uh, here in Ithaca. And um, I don't know, I didn't include a, a close-up of the quilt lines, but if you were to zoom in on it, you can see that the lines are sort of suggestive of the different stratification in the rocks, and there's some vertical parts to represent falling water. This piece, Mediterranean, was based on the, this photo on the bottom, uh, bottom right uh, that was taken in Arles, France about 10 years ago. And uh, I just, this is a really fun one. The, the, it's supposed to evoke windows and doors. And all the, the darker pieces that are in there are made of du peony silk, which is just has this luster that's just amazing in the sunlight. And then the last piece I'll show you based on um, using photos as a starting point is this piece called Abandoned Rock Wall, um, based on a, a wall that I stumbled upon while starting off on the hike outside of Boulder, Colorado. And there's a picture of the wall. So I could go on. Um, I just have a few last things I want to show you to give you a broader view of everything I do. Um, I started this year making mini quilts, four inch by six inch pieces that I then mount in these eight by 10 inch frames. Um, those are fun, they're fun on their own, they're fun in a grouping. Still trying to decide whether I like them in a white frame or the black frame, so open for, for uh, feedback on that. I also make mixed media collages. Um, these are just pure explorations of using different materials, fabrics, papers, um, dichroic glass, uh, all kinds of stuff is in there. And there. It's like a little quilt sandwich of all those different materials mounted on um, canvas that's been painted with acrylic paint. This is one I did that's um, 
dyed fabrics that were cut and pieced and sewn, et cetera, and then mounted on this textured acrylic background. I also occasionally do functional art. I make table runners. This is a picture that a customer sent to me of what it looked like in her home, which is always so much fun to see. That's pretty much the only functional thing I do. I don't really do bed quilts anymore. Um, and then this past year, I've been venturing into the world of abstract painting. So here's just a couple of them to show you a few samples, just two. Here's this is Go For It and Warmth in Winter. And then finally, I sell greeting cards. I have about 50 designs. I call them sneak peek packs because each composition is taken from a larger piece of work that I've done. Um, and that's just kind of fun. So that is pretty much what I have to say for now. My website is artquiltsbybarb.com. I hope you'll come and visit. You can also follow me on Instagram, same name, Art Quilts by Barb. And on Facebook, a little bit different, Art Quilts and Acrylics by Barb. So thank you for spending these few minutes with me. Stay safe and stay well. And I look forward to the time when we can visit again in person. Thank you so much. Bye for now.